Hi everybody, welcome back to Sprat STEM Academy. Today we're going to be talking about DNA, aka deoxyribonucleic acid. We're going to go through DNA structure and talk about base pairing as well. So let's get right into it. DNA. We know DNA to be this really cool sort of stringy picture. This is what we normally think of, but what we don't really think of is what exactly is in this and what makes it up. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we get into the structure of DNA, I want to mention Watson and Crick, who are the most um, viewed as finding the structure of DNA and kind of putting it into words and being really, really important in the biological community. But I also want you to keep in mind that Rosalind Franklin, she was another biologist who used X-ray crystallography to really find this DNA structure. It's also called the double helix. So keep her in mind next time you think about who really um, is to mention and credit for finding the structure of DNA and really putting it into a clear picture for scientists. Okay, so we know DNA. Um, let's talk about a formal definition. The formal definition of DNA is that it is a molecule that contains genetic information. For protein synthesis. So your cells in your body, they all have DNA in them. And DNA is essentially telling your cell what to do. All right, so keep that in mind. That's kind of the nutshell, basic definition of DNA. Okay, so let's talk about the structure of DNA. This structure is called a double helix because it kind of looks like a ladder, but it's like twisted in a way. We're gonna get into that, but it's called a double helix. So keep that in mind. And within these kind of bands, we see these lines. And we're gonna talk about what these lines are in just a second. Okay, so what you really need to know about DNA is that it has some pretty basic components. The first component you wanna know is the sugar phosphate backbone. Okay, that's the backbone of DNA. Backbone. Okay, so these right here, the twists, that's the sugar phosphate backbone, and that's going to be negatively charged because it's a negatively charged uh, compound ion. Okay, so that's the sugar phosphate backbone. These lines right here and here and everywhere, those are going to be our bases. Okay, and the bases, we actually have four DNA bases, and I'm going to write them all out for us. We have adenine, and I'm just gonna use A. We have guanine. We also have cytosine and thymine. So these are all the bases that are going to be within DNA. So this is C, this is T. Now, these bases aren't just randomly here. They have to be paired together. You have to have one base with another base. Now, how do we pair together these four bases? Well, they're actually pretty special. They like to be with their special person, their special other friend. So, adenine and thymine are together. They like to be together. Guanine and cytosine are together. So within these lines, these base pairs are going to be what make up these lines. And base pairs are actually held together by something we call hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds. 
And something to note is the bonds between guanine and cytosine, they're going to have three hydrogen bonds. And adenine and thymine are gonna have two hydrogen bonds. So when it comes to which uh, base pair is easier to break apart, automatically think of adenine and thymine's uh, base pairing because two hydrogen bonds is going to be a lot easier to break than three hydrogen bonds. So really keep that in mind because we call complementary base pairing complementary base pairing in which A goes to T and G goes to C and vice versa. C will not be going to A, G will not go to T. They have to go with their respective pair, their respective bases. So also make sure you keep that in mind. One of the last things I want to talk about is why DNA is twisted. The reason that DNA has this sort of twisted structure and that it's not just a straight line up and down with the base pairs like this is because the twisting, it reduces the space in between the base pairs, which makes sure that cell fluid that's around the DNA does not get in between them. One last thing to note about DNA is that it is anti-parallel. And how do we denote that something is anti-parallel, specifically DNA? We say that one strand starts at three prime because DNA has two ends, three prime end and a five prime end. So let's start with this strand. If I follow the strand, let's say I want this to be three prime. So this end will be three prime. I go down and around. So this end, this is the same strand. This is gonna be five prime, okay? So that's one strand, but this second strand, let's say that we have this strand right here. This strand, we will not label this end as three prime. Because they're anti-parallel, this end must be five prime, and this end must be three prime. That kind of gives DNA the anti-parallel nature. We don't want to have two of the same ends on one side. They have to be different because anti-parallelism. So that is the structure of DNA. Now you know what ATGC are. You know they're your bases. I hope this made sense. This is just a quick refresher guide on DNA. Make sure to give this video a like. Don't forget to comment and subscribe for more.